What's the most important government in a society, the family or the state? American Visions uh, Worldview Conference, which will uh, take place in uh, July 21st through the 24th at um, uh, North Metro uh, Church here in the Kennesaw Marietta area. You can go online uh, at American, American Visions site and go to look at the events page and get more specifics about that. It's dealing with the fundamentals of a Christian worldview. Uh, American Vision has never believed that civil government is the salvation of our society. Uh, the first series of books that I wrote called God and Government outlines government from a biblical perspective. The underlying aspect of a society is the individual. If you don't have good self-governors, you're not going to have good family governors, church governors, um, uh, for, uh, and uh, civil governors. And so the, the basic foundation of a society in terms of, of governments is in fact the, the family. The family feeds the church, the family feeds the culture, the family feeds the state. If you don't begin with that premise, you're going to have a top-heavy, uh, very oppressive, uh, top-down uh, system. Uh, and uh, so in, in our conference, it's a little different from most. While most people are going to be centering on politics this year because of the upcoming election, and, uh, and uh, please keep in mind that American Vision does not dismiss politics by any means, American Vision is going to, is going to deal uh, mostly with the more fundamental principles of a society, and that is getting the individual right with, with, with God in terms of what the Bible says about what the individual ought to do in self-government, and also to talk about what the family is all about, and then all of the other offshoots of that as a, a, a full uh, Christian worldview uh, should be developed within a Christian. And I have on the line with me Israel Wayne, who's going to be dealing with the family and dominion. Uh, Israel, welcome to the show. Great to be with you, Gary. Uh, give us a little bit of your background. I've got some of it, uh, some of it here, and uh, you're a homeschool graduate. Uh, I, I don't. And uh, how, how many children do you have? I have six children. So, uh, homeschool. How, give, give me what's your age. I'm just trying to get an idea of the the homeschool movement in here and how it's how it's developed since its inception, probably in the 19 uh, set, late 1970s and through the 80s. So, uh, how old are you? I'm going to be 35 next month. Oh, my, so mother, yeah. my mother uh, actually started homeschooling uh, my older sister in 1978, uh, which was about five years before the birth of the modern-day Christian homeschooling movement. The sort of libertarian unschooling movement started in 1977 with John Holt, but the Christian homeschool movement, I would say, officially started in 1983, and uh, so we were ahead of that by quite a bit. I was uh, entirely homeschooled my entire education except for two years in private Christian school, so I'm a, a rare anomaly in that I've never spent a day of my life in a secular, anti-Christian government institution. Yeah, our, two, yeah, our two sons, it's the same way. We, we homeschooled for a little while. They, we sent them to a couple of private Christian schools, and uh, now they both, they, they both work for me. So apparently we've done something right. They actually wanted to work for me, which is something. I didn't force them into this. That's great. Uh, so, so, that's, so that's a good thing. Um, you're a regular columnist for Homeschool Digest. And uh, the, what is the Brush uh, Arbor Quarterly? Brush Arbor Quarterly is kind of a devotional discipleship-based magazine. Uh, we also publish uh, a magazine for Christian women called An Encouraging Word. So our parent publishing company here, Wisdom's Gate, has three periodicals that we publish, as well as books, and we do seminars, and I speak at conferences, and I've actually written a book on uh, homeschooling uh, called Homeschooling from a Biblical Worldview, which is one of the only books on home education that pre presents a philosophy of education from the perspective of a homeschooled graduate, so it's kind of unique in that way. Uh, since you've been at this thing from the beginning as a, as a young homeschooler and saw this, uh, give us some of the trends that, you're, that, that you've seen or are spotting and wh where maybe the homeschooling movement uh, may be going in the, in the future. Well, there's a number of things I could point to. Uh, one of the trends that I see happening is that we've cycled almost completely back around to having a kind of head-to-head -head, uh, ideological uh, you know, showdown, so to speak, between 
the unschooling movement that started in the late 1970s with uh, John Holt, and that was really something that was carried all the way from Rousseau, uh, Friedrich Froebel, uh, Maria Montessori, the Waldorf schools, all of that, which was kind of this libertarian view of education that the government shouldn't be educating children. But their worldview was that children are innately good, that the nature of uh, the human person is innately good, and that the best education is kind of that of the noble savage. If you leave a child to himself or herself, that they will grow up to be the pinnacle of evolutionary perfection. So you want as little involvement from the state or even from the parents as possible, just allow the child to kind of direct their own learning. And of course, that flies in the face of Christian theology, which teaches that uh, the child is not innately good, but in fact, uh, you know, has has a, a sinful nature, a level of depravity that um, that keeps them from being able to choose the right thing, and that's why they they need to be instructed in the Word of God. So what's happening now is that's kind of cycling back around. CBS just did a feature on unschooling, uh, featured a family who said that you know, we homeschool our children with no books, no formal education, no academics, no no discipline, no training. The children just you know do what they want all day. That's actually, I would say, one of the fastest-growing segments of the homeschooling movement today uh, is that kind of libertarian side of of, of education. So that's an interesting facet that's kind of cycled back around uh, 30 some years later. Another aspect, though, that's always been there is the battle between statism and parental authority. And, you know, one of the things that Christian theologians over the years have done is sought to find that line of, of distinction between the roles of the state and the roles of the church, the roles of the family. Uh, Herman Duyerware, the Dutch theologian, uh, helped to promote an idea called sphere sovereignty, which is that basically you know each one of these different forms of government have their own authority and their own autonomy, and that they should be respectful of the roles and distinctions of the other. And uh, unfortunately, the way that's been applied uh, has been that there's been kind of a compartmentalization within some Christians' worldview uh, that you know the the family has nothing to say to the church and the church has nothing to say with the state. I think that's uh, taking the theology too far. But what we want to do as Christians is we do want to have a, a proper understanding of sphere sovereignty, but also realize uh, from a presuppositional worldview that all of life is sacred, that all of life is integrated and that the family really is the building block of the, of the church, the corporate government, uh, the civil magistrate, and all other forms of, of government as well. Yeah, it's really amazing to me to find how many they, people criticize the, the government, they criticize governmental intrusion, they don't like what's going on in the world, they don't, they, all this mess that's coming out of Hollywood and what's going on in the schools, and yet they're still sending their children to the one institution, you know, six to eight hours a day, you know, 10 months out of the year for 12 years, and uh, they don't seem to be able to make the connection here uh, that, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Now, some kids, of course, survive all that. I've known lots of kids who've gone through public schools and have done, have done well. Most of those, I believe, are in uh, probably communities uh, where, the, where the, uh, uh, the, the parental controls are, are still operative among, uh, among families. I just got back from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I was reminiscing with my mother and some high school friends about really things were different in the 1950s and the 1960s regarding neighborhood communities and that's that's I don't think that's generally the case uh, today uh, the educational establishment has in fact it's no longer in loco parentis but it has actually been has been taking the place of parents uh, in, in every direction and parents have really no say so as to what goes on in the in the school system and part of that is the shift from modernity to post-modernity, and that modernity's stated objectives were to just transmit facts and objective data and allow the child to make up their own minds about what they believed about that data and that the moral application was something that was supposed to be right. added or supplemented by the parents or by the church. But within the postmodern paradigm, postmodern educators are saying there is no such thing as neutrality, which you and I both agree with. Uh, but they're saying, so let's just be blatant about our bias and let's teach toward our bias. And so there really is an evangelistic uh, approach, I think, that the secular leftists have within the educational system. Within, yeah, Israel, within Israel the last we got we, we got to go. Uh, thanks for for the for the talk. It's a, it was a quick ten minutes. We look forward to seeing you at American Visions Worldview Conference. 
on July 21st or the 24th. Uh, go to AmericanVision.org or AmericanVision.com for more information. God bless you. American Vision is proud to present this year's Worldview Super Conference July 21st through 24th at North Metro Church, Marietta, Georgia. For more information, visit conference.americanvision.org. That's conference.americanvision.org.